In 2019, the discovery of a new species of dinosaur, named Vespersaurus, was announced. A small theropod, it lived 85 million years ago in southeastern Brazil. While it is the first Brazilian dinosaur found from this time, Vespersaurus is not the first indication of their presence there. Dinosaur fossil footprints have also been found there, which likewise appear to have been made by a small theropod. However, these footprints seem to have been made by one that was monodactyl, meaning that it only had one toe on each foot. Most other theropods instead supported their weight with three toes. At first glance, Vespersaurus would not seem to be the track maker, as it possessed the same number of toes typical of most other theropods. But a closer examination of Vespersaurus's middle toe reveals it was much larger and longer than the rest, strong enough to walk and even run without the support of the two outer toes. Instead, these two toes seem to have been held off the ground. While it wasn't truly a one-toed dinosaur, Vespersaurus was functionally monodactyl, with feet matching those of the one-toed fossil tracks. But while they weren't used for walking, Vespersaurus's two outer toes were far from vestigial. Their claws were similar to the sickle claws of the famous Dromaeosaurids, though Vespersaurus's were both straighter and sharper. They therefore seem to have been better at slicing than piercing. It is still unclear why Vespersaurus only walked on one toe. One possibility was to free up the outer toes to be better used as weapons, as was the case for the less extreme adaptations in the Dromaeosaurids. Another was for the same reason as many other species, speed. When the weight of an animal is concentrated in one area, like one toe instead of three, the foot is more resistant to stress. This allows the animal to run or hop faster without the risk of hurting its feet. Animals with reduced digits are usually found in open environments, like deserts or grasslands. If speed was why Vespersaurus evolved its odd feet, it would not have been an exception. 85 million years ago, southern Brazil was part of a vast desert. It could be that both of these factors, or factors that have not yet been considered, were behind the evolution of Vespersaurus's unusual feet. Since a biomechanical study of its feet and claws has not yet been performed, it is currently unknown what its exact capabilities were. Besides its feet, the details of Vespasaurus's appearance are not entirely certain either, as only 40% of its skeleton was preserved. It is not even clear if all of these bones actually belonged to Vespasaurus, as the skeleton was disarticulated and found with pterosaur bone fragments. The other bones from the site are assigned to Vespasaurus because they are the same size and seem to come from the same group of theropods as Vespasaurus though this assignment is only tentative. From what can be gathered, Vespersaurus was small, about a meter to a meter and a half long. Besides its feet, Vespersaurus's appearance seems to have been fairly typical of most small, carnivorous theropods. Its arms, however, were rather short. Despite Dromaeosaurus also possessing toes held above the ground, Vespersaurus was not closely related to them. Instead, it belonged to the much more obscure theropod clade, Noasauridae. Noasauridae consisted of two major groups. The first, the Elaphrosaurines, were carnivorous when they hatched and shifted to a herbivorous diet as they became adults. The branch of Vespersaurus was a part of, Noasaurinae, instead consisted of small, lifelong predators. While Solorosaurs like the Dromaeosaurs were present in Gondwana, they were less abundant there during the late Cretaceous than they were in the northern continents. Instead, the Noasaurines were some of the most common, small, carnivorous dinosaurs in the south. However, Vespersaurus and its relatives were still less common than this would imply. During the late Cretaceous, many of the niches held by small dinosaurs elsewhere in the world were instead held by crocodilimorphs in Gondwana. Unfortunately, the other Noasaurines are of limited help in trying to fill in the gaps in Vespersaurus. While Vespersaurus is known from less than half of a skeleton, it is actually one of the most complete members of the clade. Instead, Vespersaurus may actually help to fill in the gaps in other Noasaurines. The only Noasaurine known for more material than Vespersaurus is Masiakosaurus, with 65% of its skeleton known between different specimens. Masiakosaurus is also the only Noasaurine known from a mostly complete skull. Unusually, at the end of its mouth, its teeth protrude outwards, though exactly what it was using these teeth for remains debated. 
With the exception of some isolated Masiacosaurus like teeth found in early Cretaceous Brazil, no other Noosaurian fossils could confirm or deny if Masiacosaurus's bizarre teeth were ubiquitous to the clade or not. Vesprosaurus may help to answer this. Among the material assigned to it is a single preserved tooth. This tooth is from the same part of the skull as Masiacosaurus's odd teeth, and it didn't protrude outwards. Therefore, while Vesprosaurus may have had unusual feet, it, and at least some other Noosaurians, had teeth more typical of most other theropods. This is not the only impact Vesprosaurus has had in deciphering Noosaurian anatomy. Besides the tracks left by Vesprosaurus in late Cretaceous Brazil, similar one to tracks have also been found in formations from the early Cretaceous and late Jurassic. This suggests that some other closely related Noosaurians shared Vesprosaurus's functionally monodactyl feet. Different reconstructions of Vesprosaurus in this video have portrayed it as either feathered or entirely scaly. As of right now, no direct indications of the outer covering of Vesprosaurus or any other Noosaurid have been found. Large scale impressions have been found in the Abelos sword Carnotaurus, the closest relative of Vesprosaurus with direct indications of integument. However, Carnotaurus was of summer size to modern mammals, which have reduced fur to prevent overheating. While discoveries over the past few decades have found that feathers may have been ancestral to dinosaurs, in general, they are usually found in smaller species. However, Noosaurians may have been an exception. Examination of Maschiascosaurus's growth rate found it to be 40% slower than most other similarly sized theropods, but still 40% faster than in crocodilians. This suggests it had a lower metabolism than most other theropods, which would have reduced the need for the thermal insulation provided by feathers. Whether this means Masiascosaurus actually lost its feathers, and whether Vesprosaurus shared its apparently lower metabolism, both remain unknown. While not as ferocious as some of its larger relatives, Vesprosaurus has revealed an impressive new adaptation in dinosaurs. It has also proven very helpful in understanding other Noosaurians. Hopefully, new Vesprosaurus fossils will be found and a biomechanical study of it will be performed, so we can learn even more about the dinosaur that ran on one toe. Thank you for watching. I hope you learned something interesting. Have a great day, and if you enjoyed the video, please remember to hit the like button.